Hey everyone, Patrick Wagner here for Digital 100, episode number 32. And I've waited a long time and I really can't wait anymore. I need to talk about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. Um, to kind of go back, um, I got involved with uh, the concept of Bitcoin three or four years ago. Um, so I was a I wouldn't consider it too early of an adopter, but I did see Bitcoin when it was only, you know, 10 bucks, 100 bucks, um, you know, up to about 700 bucks. That was kind of the time period that I watched Bitcoin. I tried to mine a little bit of Bitcoin and I really got into analyzing the industry and understanding the industry. So that's kind of how long I've been involved. And I think it's important because I think Bitcoin is a big concept with a lot of implications and it does take a long period of time to not only understand what Bitcoin does, um, the other ancillary industries that have built around it and what that means for the future of this technology and how people have confused it as well with the term blockchain. So all of these things take a long time to dive into. And so I, I find that it's like every month or two that someone's involved in this industry, they start to learn more and understand the impacts and they understand the landscape. Um, there's a lot of great books like Crypto Assets. Um, I'll hopefully name a few more at the end of this episode that you can check out to learn about the industry if you are interested. Um, but this episode is really just about um, explaining what my understanding is um, to this date of Bitcoin, blockchain, and cryptocurrencies, especially with Bitcoin's price falling to what it is today. So at the time of this recording, Bitcoin's at around $4,100, so $4,180 to $4,200. Uh, it recently dropped down to $3,600. Um, it did reach a high of I think it was 19, 16 to 19,000, depending on what index you looked at for that charting or for that price. So it's come down quite a bit. Um, most of the folks that I work with on the charting side for Bitcoin, so we use the same type of stock charting analysis for Bitcoin price action. And uh, the folks that I work with, uh, we were expecting a bit of a bounce off of that 4,200 level um, so the fact that things fell apart through there um, is actually more positive, surprising. Um, so let me get started. Let's put the money stuff aside. And I think that's actually a good way of introing the whole concept. So I'm not going to go into a how to of what is Bitcoin. I'm actually going to include a video that was made by uh, Jack uh, Dorsey from Twitter. Um, and he did a fantastic job. He's a big proponent of Bitcoin as well. And it's just such a simple and beautiful uh, way of understanding Bitcoin. But I'll do the quick synopsis of it's, you know, a peer to peer system designed to allow for no third party to have to, you know, authorize transactions. So instead, miners mine transactions to kind of keep the system moving along. They're given small rewards for the mining effort. And those are Bitcoins and that keeps transactions running but it doesn't require a third party. And that's really the key win of Bitcoin. So a lot of people who are <laughs> scared of blockchain, or oh, sorry, scared of crypto. Sorry guys. A lot of people who are scared of cryptocurrencies, you'll see a lot of CEOs, a lot of smart people not wanting to say anything positive about crypto or Bitcoin. Most people have started to say, oh, blockchain, the underlying technology, that's the real benefit. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Um, you know, the reality is blockchain is nothing. Blockchain, the technology itself and the underlying technology itself is no more than Excel database, you know, and it's an open database that people can see transaction by transaction. So the concept of it is not the value. It's like saying, uh, you know, I can put a battery into a small electric, you know, toy car, and that's the equivalent of a Tesla. You know, it, it makes no sense. So the reality is that blockchain is the underlying concept, but the only working concept 
that has ever actually made anything is Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is the real value and is the real creation, you know? So it took concepts because of blockchain, but Bitcoin and the way it's designed is the true win and is the true value to the economy and to people. So what will end up happening with Bitcoin is, you know, I, I say this all the time to people because people always come up to me and say, you know, Bitcoin sounds, sounds great, great, but the price has fallen so much, so it must be a scam, it must be this, it must be that. And I tell people, price has nothing to do with Bitcoin. The fact that there is a price associated to the commodity makes other people think that that means something to the value. Um, I know this is a weird example. If you know Star, Star Trek, there was this episode where uh, there was this device called the Borg. It looked like a square ship that flew around, run by robots, that had a computer that just did what it had to do. That's what Bitcoin is. It's like this automatic, you know, transactional system in the sky that doesn't require anyone or is not held responsible by anyone. So once you do your transaction, you don't have to worry about, you know, like I have to go into a bank to do a wire transfer, stand in line, they have to check my ID, I have to put a pin in, they have to be okay with where I'm sending it, and they have to okay each step of the transaction along the way, and it goes to different banks and they check everything so everyone knows what you're doing. You know, when you're transacting in Bitcoin, once that transaction is authorized and goes through correctly, it's on the blockchain, it doesn't go anywhere. You know, so you don't have to worry and no one has to really authorize it, and those are the factors that make it a very exciting technology. Now, the key to Bitcoin, and a lot of people miss that, is more recent, only in the last few years, as Bitcoin started to gain value from that $100 to $1,000 range, Bitcoin started to gain enough servers and computers and miners that Bitcoin started to pass a point that was extremely important, a point where no longer could anyone just come along and attack the coin by mining it or by trying to influence it using some of these technologies uh, within the systems. Um, it's called a 51% attack, meaning that if you have 51% of all the mining power that you can actually change what's on the blockchain. And so Bitcoin surpassed that moment when it reached enough servers and computers that were wide enough and around the world and all over the place that there's no government in the world and there's no way to attack Bitcoin to stop it. And that is the real value, you know, um, because anyone can come along and copy, you know, a Bitcoin or copy the concept of Bitcoin and start their own. And that's what all cryptocurrencies are. They're, you know, deteriorating copies and versions of Bitcoin. So the biggest ones that you see out there are almost direct copies with slight variations to them. All the rest of the cryptocurrencies are, are, are more or less garbage because they produce very little technology or value. So it's like saying, hey, Coke's been invented, then there's Pepsi, then there's all these other ones that you've never heard of. Um, and they really believe that one day they'll be bigger than Coke. You know, And that's the variation of what's out there. Um, the key is that you know Bitcoin, uh, as a concept itself is now at a place where it's safe, it, it can't be taken over. All these other coins on the other hand can, can be attacked and they're small enough and not big enough that they can be attacked at this 51% level, which makes them very unsafe and very insecure. That doesn't mean that you know people will not make money on some cryptocurrencies, but the reality is I think I explained this best and I heard this somewhere, but Bitcoin is the technology that matters, okay? And that concept is the one that will change and evolve to make huge innovations. Um, it will not come from some of these random cryptocurrencies. Majority of cryptocurrencies are designed as a casino to take away your Bitcoin, right? And once you realize that, it's really just there for you to spend your Bitcoin and to do something with it. And that's why people usually end up participating with cryptocurrencies. But the majority of them have zero technological value at all. And, you know, the maybe top five um, actually do have transactional stuff and do have some potential, like a Litecoin, 
um, which has a lot of transaction. But again, that's just a copy of Bitcoin. So again, I don't see a, a longer term value to it. Um, the next thing would be something like Ripple, you know, something I hate very much. Again, I think it's a garbage concept and technology. I'm usually not this like mean about technology and, and companies. But the fact is, these aren't real companies. They're not usually run by real people and they don't produce anything of value. You know, and that was the biggest thing I noticed. These are just pieces of software people put up and send pretend transactional numbers between each other. Um, XRP or Ripple is the only one that's trying so desperately hard to work its way within the banking system and has done that. That I think that one has some potential not to be legitimate. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a legitimate cryptocurrency. I'm just saying from an investment point of view, I think some people may make money off that. I won't, don't recommend it. No, do I think anyone should invest in any cryptocurrencies, period. Right. I think Bitcoin is a concept. And as a concept, I think it's amazing. And I'm 100 percent behind that concept. I'm not proponent of investments for people and telling people what to invest in because again that's not the point of bitcoin is there a potential for bitcoin to be a lottery and bounce up and down in price and be very volatile and make a whole bunch of people rich sure but that's not really the underlying value um you know because you can transact in bitcoin and immediately switch back to us so if i wanted to buy a 50 million dollar building in, in in shanghai i could send 50 million dollars in Bitcoin or receive, let's say, 50 million in Bitcoin and transact and, and change that into USD or whatever currency immediately. So you don't have to worry about that liability that so many people think, oh, well, what if I buy Bitcoin at this price and then tomorrow it's half that price? This is awful. I don't want to do this. So transactors usually change back to the, the, the currency immediately. You can transact in Bitcoin on you know, large platforms and exchanges like Gemini, where you can buy your Bitcoin, sell it and, and put it back into currency immediately. So you don't have to hold Bitcoin or you can buy Bitcoin and store it into the, the best cold storage devices and cold wallets, which are offline. And it holds your Bitcoin, keeps you on your record in, in the blockchain. And that way your Bitcoins are safe. So originally, a lot of the shows that I did at the beginning of Digital 100 were based on, you know, digital security and becoming a proper digital warrior. Because of my time in crypto and, and with Bitcoin, I realized how vital security was. I think you've noticed over the last two years how many more hacking attempts there are, how many more hackers are asking for Bitcoin now, and how many hackers are targeting your personal devices and your home computers because now there's a chance for them to gain access to easy money that they can get and there's no way you can get it back so it's similar to and i'm actually surprised in canada we have um, e-transfers and e-transfers from a bank to an individual there's no way of going back on those transactions either you know so if there's frauds that, that happen they actually happen that way too and it's actually very similar to bitcoin there is no reverse there is no refund it is a one-way transaction so that's why hackers are really getting sophisticated and the amount of uh you know cyber security issues that are going to happen over the next few years is unbelievable especially because i think the idea of bitcoin as a value as well is that a lot of technologies and softwares don't want to get into the financial industry to operate and with bitcoin you can use that as your let's say digital currency within your application or whatever your program is and then simply flip back to currency when you're paying out people so i think you'll see also some amazing innovations based on this technology and this type of idea that might come out of some some sort of you know variation on bitcoin or a change to bitcoin but i highly doubt I mean, there's a chance that there's something being built in some back room right now being tested that could supersede and super surpass Bitcoin. But I have a hard time believing from everything I've seen out of the thousands and thousands of coins I've looked at in the cryptocurrency space. You know, they're all garbage. Um, they don't have real companies behind them. They don't have real teams. Um, you know, anybody who says otherwise is really just trying to take your money. 
um, you know, stay away from cryptocurrencies unless you look at it as a casino. You know, I think someone put the best kind of analogy to it for me was um, cryptocurrency side is pretty much like an option, a long option. So if you know options trading, you can buy options and you can go long, which is you think uh, everything's going to go positive and it's a long gamble and it's a leveraged gamble. That's kind of what cryptocurrencies are. You're at a roulette table and instead of 36 to one, it might be 3,600 to one, the win. But the chances of winning are, you know, 0.0000001, you know? So that's how you have to look at crypto. If you want to look at cryptocurrencies, think of it as a full gambling experience. You know, Bitcoin is the real technology that matters and you know, disconnect it from the price. If you're looking at Bitcoin from an investment point of view, that's different. Then you need to look at the price. You need to look at the chart. You need to look at those levels. You need to understand the support and resistance that's coming off. You know, just to talk to that briefly, because I do watch price and I'm an avid investor in, in looking at Bitcoin and when are the right times to invest. This big dramatic drop off we saw was actually one of the scenarios we had mapped out as being super positive for Bitcoin. Because had we stayed in that level of six or five thousand for a long period of time, it may have been two years and then we would have fallen apart and then risen back up. This type of faster capitulation in price is super positive for Bitcoin. I know it sounds very counterintuitive, but the quicker we see this fall apart in price, no matter how low it goes, I'm going to be a proponent of Bitcoin. Um, you know what I mean? And if it really does drop dramatically low, I'll probably be an investor in Bitcoin, right? That's how confident I am in the technology and the concept itself. But as an investment, you know what I mean? It's totally different. And again, I'm not advising anybody to invest in Bitcoin or any cryptocurrencies. What I am advising is that you do see the opportunities of what's out there and you get familiar with what is something you want to stay away from or be obvious that it's a casino. So you're going to gamble your money away. Understand what Bitcoin is and don't be afraid to, you know, know what the value of Bitcoin is when you're speaking and don't just say blockchain as being the one thing that matters. You know, I think all of these things are going to be around. I believe that cryptocurrencies, all of them will be around for a long time. More and more will continue to come out. Like I said, they're casinos and casino games and they're just gambling. Right. So if you're if you're up for gambling your money away, cryptocurrencies place to go. You'll, you'll throw all your money away very quickly, just like a casino. You know, Bitcoin itself has an attachment to price, but it doesn't validate or have anything to do with the technology and the underlying impact this technology will have on everything we do. Right. And I think that's the big thing, because in the news media, they don't decouple these concepts. They're all interconnected and it's all put together. And when I talk to, let's say, my mom will tell me, you know, during you know Thanksgiving dinner that Bitcoin is a scam because it's fallen so much in price. Right. But everyone knows you can buy stocks, you can buy options, you can buy a house, you can buy a car, you can buy anything and the price can drop dramatically. And that doesn't make it a scam. Right. So that being said, you know, I don't know if the price drop is finished. Like I said, we could still see a much lower price. But from what we have seen, this dramatic price drop now gives us one of the best opportunities now for a recovery in price and some investors to come in and for that price to move up. So both scenarios are there. Nonetheless, Bitcoin will survive. It will grow. It will continue to permeate within technologies. I think more and more technologies around the world will end up using Bitcoin or some element of Bitcoin for their, their currency and transactional elements. And then they'll just have a settlement function that will allow that Bitcoin to settle instantly to whatever their local currency is to keep any risk low. Because the reality is I think Apple Pay uh, is a good example of how a technology company figured out a way to do technology without becoming a bank. Apple Pay is allowed to play as a layer of technology that helps you pay for things, but they're not a bank per se. So they don't have to follow all of those rules um, that a bank would, yet they are your payment function, right? And I think Bitcoin will uh, operate in a similar layer like that. Not everyone will know it even exists, but maybe on my game, let's say like my son, son's game of Fortnite, I may be able to have a program that says, hey, you finish your 30 minutes of 
of homework on Khan Academy, you're going to get, you know, 100 V-Bucks, which is worth, let's say, $2 on Fortnite, which allows him to buy his whatever costumes, guns, whatever the things he likes for Fortnite, you know? And that's how it's all going to start to work. That kind of interconnectivity that you start to see the beginnings of AI, where I'll be able to say, if this, then that, then this. So if Oliver uh, finishes 30 minutes on this technology item that monitors his schoolwork, then give him a reward of $2 instead of you know, giving him two bucks, it goes to what he values the most, which is these V-Bucks on the game, right? And then you can say, because of that, you can also then alert his other brothers and sisters that he got this and that they didn't, and then that they need to step up their game. These are the kinds of automated AI type systems that are coming in the future that you'll be able to program that are just starting to happen with your banking and your financing. If anyone's jumped to things like Wealthsimple and other programs out there, you can start to see where these things are happening. And I think cryptocurrencies from, um, you know, the tests that I've run, it's just fantastic to see how Bitcoin works, how wallets work, how paper wallets work. Actually, after all of these years um, playing with the technology and playing with these cold wallets and paper wallets, I'm more confident than ever that Bitcoin is one of those amazing technologies and the security levels on it are fantastic. But like I said, when I did the first few episodes, I realized that those security elements are ultra important. You know, so you really, really, really have to take security super important if you want to have anything to do with Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general. And the reality is I think they're going to be everywhere. So you're going to interact with them in some way or another. That means that your security now is vital. You need to take your digital security with the utmost importance. So that means making sure you personally are secure, that you have a process that makes sure you're operating securely, you have all your passwords in a secure place and they're different, you're using your 2FA devices, let's see if I have mine here, our little guy over here, you're using this all the time, you're being safe. All of these different things are so vitally important now because as soon as your email gets hacked, or your phone SMS gets hacked, you know, at that point, all your finances, all your money can be swept away in the future, or digital businesses can be destroyed with just one hack of something as simple as a Twitter account and tons of awful things being sent out, destroying the brand. So all of these factors are ultra important. And so you really need to set these things up correctly so that you are safe, and that way you're building your digital business and yourself on a safe platform. And that way you don't have to worry about all of these things that are happening because you're actually already set up safely. So take a look at some of the videos that I did at the beginning. Go through all of them and make sure you're doing those things to make sure you're safe before you enter into the cryptocurrency kind of um if it's a world yeah i guess it's a good world uh, you know if you enter this place you're gonna see you will have your money taken if you don't know what you're doing you know so it's really important to be secure it's really important to have your digital safety and security on point and i think that's what lends to everything in cybersecurity. so make sure you do all those things get yourself on track you know, I hope this helped you understand Bitcoin a little bit more and separate the ideas of why all those other cryptocurrencies, they, they can be attacked. This 51% attack can destroy any of them, and it has a lot of them, and you can see that, so it makes them very unsafe. Bitcoin's the only one that can survive this kind of attack. It makes it too big to fail, per se. So that really, really makes it an amazing technology, um, separate from the price, right? Again, price will be dictated because there's a limited number of Bitcoins and that makes it somewhat valuable. Like I said, I am 100% sure there is something really cool being worked on in some back room that's being tested that could you know, surpass Bitcoin in the future. I'm positive there's a bunch of big banks out there working on secret projects, trying their best. I mean, I see internally banks, if they were smart enough, they would create their own clearance system 
um, run by their own servers, allowing their own internal clearance of all kind of uh, transactional elements of larger amounts to be cleared through their own type of a Bitcoin blockchain system. That would make a lot of sense because from that perspective, I think that's where you're going to see more and more of the growth is happening on uh, an institutional level and a banking level because that's the biggest value of Bitcoin. But I think you're going to end up seeing a lot of programmers and developers also leveraging Bitcoin because they don't have to involve themselves with all the financial rules they would if they were trying to use money to do the exact same things. So I think there's a lot of values there. So I hope that helped explain a little bit for you. I'm going to include some more videos below that you can watch. And remember, I don't think Bitcoin go is going anywhere. I think it's one of those technologies that is going to change our landscape dramatically. I think it's worth the effort to do the research if you haven't already to understand it better. And if you're someone higher up in a company, you know, it's important that you understand how to go about talking about it. I hear all the CEOs and everybody I respect only talking about blockchain. And in fact, staying clear of calling Bitcoin anything positive because so many people in the financial world have called Bitcoin a Ponzi scheme or a scam, you know, because there is no real owner and they don't understand and they deal with the money aspect. I look at it as a transactional system. I don't look at the commodity price. I separate those two. When you separate those two concepts, that's when you're able to appreciate the immense value of the technology itself. Let's say Bitcoin was never allowed to be worth more than one penny. If we took that conversation and applied it and then just looked at things, then I think everybody would be amazed. Then everybody would be much more accepting and willing to jump forward. I think the, 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 the up and down of the price of the commodity itself is actually a distraction and causes a lot of confusion for most people. But again, because Bitcoin is a decentralized organization, there is no CEO that can come out and say, actually, guys, this is what's happening and this is why the price drop, but we're going to do this instead and that's where the price will go up. That doesn't exist. So also the idea of decentralized organizations. I think that was one of the greatest things I noticed in the cryptocurrency sphere, right? When I looked at all these smaller cryptocurrencies, the way they're grouping together, the way they're using all of these tools to work with each other all over the planet to come up with their scam and perpetuate that scam on their cryptocurrencies. But let's say on Bitcoin, what's amazing again is all these great programmers that have come together that are working with on all these tools and are, are changing and working together. And there's this structure that exists without a CEO and without all these structures in place of a, of a formal organization. And yet it works and yet it grows and it's built to this value. Um, you know, those are the amazing things that you really have to understand because I think in the future, more and more companies and corporations are going to start building this way. You know, it's very interesting. And I think a lot of the concepts are going to be built from Bitcoin um, in the future. So it's worth your time to check it out and understand it. Um, don't rush to invest in anything. Understand the landscape, understand all the components. Like I said, try to remove price from it and you'll get a better idea of how all these things have a value in the future. And uh, don't underestimate Bitcoin. And I think you'll see a lot of great things from it. Stay away from all the other cryptocurrencies. Do not invest in any of them. Do not advise that at all. There are going to be ones that make people a lot of money but there's also a lot of options on the stock market that you can take advantage of to win and lose a lot of money. So make sure you keep that in mind. Make sure you stay safe. Your digital security is the most important thing, especially when you can see where the world is going with all this technology. Your digital security has to move up to be your number one priority. And that's what I learned from my time uh, with Bitcoin and these cryptocurrencies that security matters the most because you don't have a third party to blame. There is no customer support number for me to say, I sent a Bitcoin to someone and it turned out to be a scam. Let me get it back. Right? It doesn't exist. So that onus is and responsibility is on the user right now. The, that onus and responsibility falls onto a third party like a bank. So I can blame my bank if the money goes somewhere wrong or someone takes it out of the bank machine because I said my pin card as I walked around the store and then someone took it. 
oh, we'll give you your $500 back, you know? That doesn't exist. When that responsibility is on you, that's when security goes all the way to the top of the list. So remember that, take your digital security, make sure you're building up your digital security so you, that you build your digital business on a safe platform. And you can catch me on Twitter with any questions or comments or challenges or successes you're having with your digital business. I'm on Twitter at Patrick Wagner. I'm also on Instagram all the time at Wags. I'm also on Snapchat. And please visit the website patrickwagner.com. And keep building secure digital business. Have a great day, everyone. Today, today.